In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own custom acoustic panels for your home studio. The panels that we're gonna be making today are going to be approximately 16 inches by about four feet. And when they're all done, they're gonna look like this. However, I did just finish a big project where I made a bunch of bass traps for my studio. And I also made two more acoustic panels for my studio, which are approximately four feet by four feet. So that's actually what you see behind me right now. And I did use some wood in order to kind of create another frame around the panels and then have them sit on the ground as opposed to mounting them on the wall, which is ideal if you're renting and you don't wanna put holes in the wall with nails, that sort of thing. Plus, if you leave a little bit of space in between the insulation and the wall, the insulation actually absorbs sound to even lower frequencies. So a little bit of added benefit there if you decide to go that route as well. We'll definitely talk about all that later in the tutorial, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into it. What's up my producer friends, I'm David with anothermonsterproductions.com. So as I mentioned in the intro, I have been working on this big project where I just built a bunch of bass traps for my studio as well as some more acoustic panels. I've got it sounding pretty nice in here now, but I do have two extra pieces of insulation left over and I decided I might as well build two more panels for the back wall of the studio and then I can make a tutorial as well. Now, of course you can always buy panels pre-made online, have them shipped to you, but I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you probably are trying to save some money because it can be quite a Bit cheaper to make your own custom panels and of course in this tutorial i will be sharing the most cost effective way that i think that you can create your panels so in order to build these panels we're obviously going to need some materials and we're going to need some tools so first of all the materials that you're going to need are some sort of insulation i recommend using rock wool safe and sound which is an insulation that you can pick up at home depot you can buy a pack of 12 of them for around 50 bucks and each piece of rock wool is going to be three inches thick which is a good thickness for the panels that we're trying to create uh, when it comes to base traps if you're if you decide you want to make some base traps you probably are going to want to go at least six inches thick but for the panels that we're trying to create now three inch thickness is fine and then this this insulation is also about 15 inches wide and 47 inches tall. Now, in addition to the insulation, you're going to need something to create a frame to put the insulation inside of. So there are a few different materials you can use for this. If you're trying to go as cheap as possible, I'd recommend just getting particle board. You can also use medium density fiber board or MDF. That's gonna be a little bit more expensive. You could also use plywood, which is gonna be a little bit more expensive than that. Or you could potentially get some other kind of wood, uh, which is gonna create a frame. It doesn't really matter, but I recommend going for the cheapest option whatever's available, particle board's probably good. I was using particle board at first for my base traps and then I ran out, went back to Home Depot and they didn't have any more for sale. So I ended up going for the fiber board, which is a little bit more expensive. That's what I'm gonna be using in this tutorial. And just a little disclaimer, particle board and fiber board are known to have formaldehyde in them. So if you're worried about that while you're cutting them up, that sort of thing, maybe wear a mask or something. And at the very least, make sure that you get some safety goggles because particle board is made up of a bunch of inconsistent pieces of wood, which they really go flying and can get in your eyes and, you know, potentially bad things. So just be careful while you're working on your project. Anyway, the last material that you're going to need is some sort of fabric. A lot of people use speaker cloth, which is pretty expensive. I ended up using black burlap, which I actually really like the look of. Uh, you can potentially get other colors as well. So keep that in mind, whatever color you want uh, with your room, with your color scheme, you can build your own custom panels that way as well. And by the way, just so you know, I am going to be leaving links in the description of this video to all the materials you need. So you can just click on them, check them out. So those are all the materials you need if you're just going to be following along with this tutorial and creating the same panels that I'm making today. However, if you do decide you want the standalone panels that sit on the floor, as opposed to being mounted to the wall, then you're going to need some sort of wood as well. Well, so this is kind of up to you what you decide to get. I ended up getting five and a half inch, which I recommend in terms of thickness for your panels if you decide to build these. And what you're gonna need for each panel are two eight foot pieces and then one 10 foot piece. And you're gonna be able to cut the 10 foot into two sections, which you'll use on the top and the bottom of the panels. And then the eight feet, you're gonna cut down to whatever size you want them to, uh, depending on your room height, to sit directly on the floor. Now, obviously the wood is gonna depend on whatever size panels you end up making. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I made the four foot by four foot panels, which basically means I have three pieces of insulation in each panel. However, another common size that a lot of people will do is using two pieces of insulation in 
inside each panel. And so if you decide to go that size, obviously you're gonna have to figure out uh, what kind of wood you need for those panels. Now in terms of tools, you're gonna wanna drill. You're gonna need some sort of screws. You're gonna need a drill bit in order to drill holes into the particle board and also the wood so that you don't split the particle board or the wood. And then of course you're gonna need whatever attachment uh, that you end up using in terms of the screws that you get. So if you get star screws, you're gonna need a star bit. You're also gonna need a circular saw in order to cut everything up. And I'd recommend having some saw horses where you can place all the wood, particle board, all that stuff on. It makes it a lot easier to cut stuff. You're of course going to need a tape measure. You're going to need a staple gun and some staples in order to attach the fabric to the frame. And then of course, you're gonna want some safety materials as well. So I'd recommend getting an N95 mask or better. And then of course, some safety glasses, safety goggles, something like that. Like that and you may want to consider some ear protection as well so maybe get some earplugs it can get a little loud while you're cutting up the wood okay so the first thing that i want to do is build my frame so the fiberboard that i'm using was originally four feet by eight feet that's what i recommend you get whether it's particle board fiberboard whatever that should be plenty of material for you to build several of these acoustic panels so i'm going to go ahead and measure to cut three strips of this fiberboard and i want each piece to be three inches thick Next, I'm gonna cut two of these pieces to 47 inches. And then the last one I need to turn into two pieces of 16 and a half inches. Once you've got everything cut up, we need to go ahead and attach everything. So I'm gonna use my one inch screws. And when you're attaching everything, the length that I cut, which is 16 and a half inches, needs to be on the bottom with the 47 inch piece sitting on top of it. And that way, when the whole frame is put together, we actually have approximately 15 inches for the insulation to just sit right in there. So go ahead and drill some holes first and then screw in the screws. I like to do two screws on each corner. And then now we need to figure out the right dimensions of our fabric. So the fabric that I have right now is about 46, 47 inches across. I've already cut it to about 54 or 55 inches. And what I can basically do is just cut this fabric in half, which is gonna be right around 23 inches. Now, obviously when you're building your own panels, you're gonna to need to figure out and make sure that you're getting the right dimensions of fabric. You definitely wanna make sure that you're leaving plenty of extra room to actually mount or staple the fabric onto the panels. And you want the fabric to be able to go all the way around the sides of the panel and then go onto the back. So just keep that in mind when you're purchasing the fabric and when you're cutting it up. Once we've got our fabric cut to the proper dimensions, we wanna go ahead and attach it to the frame. So find a good place to lay your fabric out flat I'm gonna put the frame on top of it, and then we're gonna start stapling the fabric to the frame like this. Now the corners can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're planning on adding extra wood onto the sides of these panels because you don't want the fabric to overlap too much and create too much of a hump where the wood is not gonna sit flush against the frame. So what I've done with my other panels when I was attaching the wood to it was I cut off the excess fabric along the corners. And when you're doing this, you just need to be really careful that you're not cutting too much so that the fabric is still gonna be covering the front of the panel. And since these panels are gonna just be sitting directly on the wall, I just wanna make the corners look as pretty as I can. So something like that should work okay. Once you've got your fabric attached, we basically just need to put in our insulation and we're done. So you don't want the insulation to touch your skin. So you wanna be wearing some sort of gloves, a long sleeve shirt. And I also recommend wearing a respirator or an N95 mask. If you cut all the dimensions correctly, the insulation should fit in there pretty snugly and it should just sit really nice. I'm just gonna kind of push down the edges, make sure it's sitting in there really nice and tight against the fabric. And then once you're done with that, we just need to mount it on the wall and you're all done. Oh, 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 oh,